After extracting the TrueCrypt files to your USB drive, you'll probably want to rename the Setup Files folder. Uh, the best way to do this is to just click on it once, wait for a second, click on it again, and then type in the new name. In this case, we'll call this folder TrueCrypt Program. Press Enter. It's renamed. Now we'll go ahead and open it. When you open it, you'll see all of the files that are needed to run TrueCrypt. The one that we'll be using almost all the time is called TrueCrypt.exe. When you double click on this file, it'll open up the TrueCrypt program. You'll see numerous drives here listed. Any drive that hasn't already been taken up by your system is available to be used as a TrueCrypt drive. The first thing we'll have to do is what's called creating a volume. Picture a volume as a container that will contain all of your encrypted files. And eventually, we'll tell the computer to use a drive letter to refer to this container, instead of just using folder name like we would normally do. We'll click on Create Volume. This is the TrueCrypt Volume Creation Wizard. We're going to create a standard TrueCrypt volume. We'll go Next. The Volume Location. I prefer to have my TrueCrypt volumes in my My Documents folder, so we'll simply go ahead and say Select File. Make sure the location is My Documents, and we'll type a name for our TrueCrypt container called My Encrypted Files, and then I'll click Open. This is now filled in. We can click Next. The encryption you can just leave as AES and leave the hash algorithm as normal. Volume Size. This is what you have to decide on your own. How big of a container do you want to set aside for your encrypted files? Usually 250 megabytes should be more than big enough. Make sure the kilobytes is not selected and the megabytes is selected. Type in 250. It'll tell you how much space you have on your hard drive. Then click Next. Choose your password. Make sure you choose one carefully, one that you'll remember, but one that is not easy to break. If you choose a password that is too short and try to go Next, the computer will warn you. Warning, short passwords are easy to crack. We recommend choosing a password consisting of more than 20 characters. Are you sure you want to use a short password? For this example, we'll say no. I'll go back and I'll type in something longer. Then I'll say next. You'll see this starting to flicker. Just means that it's randomly creating um, encryption keys. I will click Format. You'll see this progress, meaning it's just formatting our 250 meg drive right now. In other words, it's preparing our container for our encrypted files. tells me that the formatting was successful and it's all ready to go. It says if you want to create another volume, click Next, which we do not want to do, so I'm going to click Exit. The next step is to actually mount our volume. What we've just done is we've created a volume which tells the computer where our encrypted files will actually be and you can see that the thing that we just created, the volume, is still selected. We have to now tell the computer what drive letter to set aside for our encrypted volume. So let's go ahead and select J. And now we click Mount. Mount is the process of telling the computer, hey, use this drive letter to store encrypted files in. And any files that go in there will automatically go in our encrypted volume, which is actually just a file. A very large file, but just a file. So let me click Mount, 
and now the computer is going to ask for our password to open up that volume and I'll click OK and now you'll see that this file is now mounted on the J drive and also you'll see that we have 249 megabytes on that drive to store files. The files will always be encrypted. After we've mounted our volume, in this case on the J drive, um, it becomes part of our computer's filing system and we no longer need to have the TrueCrypt window open. Okay? J drive is currently open for us to add files to and remove files and read files. Um, but we don't need this window here anymore. You can close it and you will still see it on the lower right hand corner of the screen. Uh, down here, lower right hand corner, there it is. That's the TrueCrypt icon right there. If we double click it, it'll open back up. Just like this. If we were to go into my computer, we'll see that there's a new drive there called the J drive. And if we double click on it, we'll see that it's empty. And we can do things like copy files here, move files here, and even create new files here. If I were to say create a new text document of something that you want encrypted, like social security numbers, we could do that right here. I could go in and I could add, let's see here, I could go ahead and add Oh, any social security number linked to whatever name I wanted to. And then when we close it, it stays here on the J drive. We can close the J drive, we can open up the J drive again, and there it is. Now so long as this volume is mounted, anyone can sit at the computer and read this file. This file is encrypted, however it's also open right now. So, the last thing you want to do when you're done working with your encrypted files and your encrypted volumes is you want to dismount them. If I dismount this file, or dismount this volume, the J, you'll see that it disappears. It's encrypted and it's closed. There is no way anyone could ever read this file without the password. Notice here we have a file in my documents called My Encrypted Files. This is actually what used to be our volume, the J drive. That little text document that we created is in here. If I were to double click on it, the computer has no idea how to handle it. Anyone sitting down at your computer would see this thing and go, hmm, doesn't look like there's any application here to open this up with. But you can open it up if you just open TrueCrypt again. If I go back and I open the TrueCrypt program like this, now I can go and I can choose that file that is unopenable unless we use TrueCrypt. Go to my documents, find the fo my encrypted files file. I click open. That tells the computer where the volume will come from. Now I can click on any drive letter here actually. It doesn't have to be the J drive like it was before. I can choose anything that's listed here. In this case I'll choose X. I'll click mount. It'll ask me for the password which you have to get right, it has to be proper case, or you will never open the data again if you don't know the password. Click OK, and there it is. Once it's open, you can go ahead and add to, remove, or modify the data within the container. Now let's go over a couple of special notes. First, you must dismount the volume before you leave your computer or else anyone sitting at the computer will be able to read the data. Okay?
dismounting is the only way to keep it safe. It closes the volume so that no one can read the encryption without the proper password. That's the first note. The second note is a reminder. Exit button here or the close button here will not automatically dismount your file. Okay. Once again, if anyone sits down and they look at your computer, they go to my computer, they'll see, hmm, what is this? There's an X drive right here. Let's open it up and take a look. They'll be able to read your data from that drive. Okay. Closing this does not do it. You must dismount the file. And finally, if you have a USB drive that this is on, you've created it either on a flash drive or some other portable USB drive, you may not remove the drive before you dismount it. In other words, if you just pull the drive out without dismounting it via TrueCrypt, you will corrupt the data and lose everything. Once again, you will destroy the data if you do not dismount it first. So I just clicked on dismount. Now I have a blank screen here. I can take that USB drive out of my computer and put it in my pocket. And then I can close this and we're done. This postscript is for those of you using a USB drive with TrueCrypt. This is assuming that you've unzipped TrueCrypt onto your USB drive. In this example, we'll assume that your USB drive is drive F. It's already plugged into my machine. If I open it, we'll see that the TrueCrypt program is there, along with some other things. In the documentation, um, we have you delete all of this other stuff except for the TrueCrypt program folder. In the TrueCrypt program folder is the TrueCrypt file that we talked about throughout the exercise. So once again, if you have a jump drive and TrueCrypt is on it, you open up the jump drive, you open up the TrueCrypt program, and you can just run the TrueCrypt program from here by double-clicking on it.